e-commerce has been heating up in a huge way. It's making life-changing opportunities for entrepreneurs, whether you're buying or selling these businesses or just building out them. And it's really cool to see how much it has grown. And honestly, there's only two platforms that seem to have really risen to dominance in a big way, and that's Amazon FBA, and Shopify. So if you're on this video, you are probably wanting to understand, well, what's really the difference? Which one should I do? So let's talk about it. Amazon versus Shopify. Let's see who is going to win this little boxing match. Hey everyone, my name is Gregory Alfrank. I am the director of marketing at Empire Flippers, where we help people just like you buy and sell online businesses literally every single day of the week. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Amazon FBA versus Shopify. I'm gonna be breaking them down in a little bit of each and really talking about my honest opinion of which one I think is easier to start in you know, 2021, 2022, whatever year you're in. This could change, but I don't see it changing in the foreseeable future, so it should be pretty evergreen. Amazon, which is a really weird way to do this abbreviation because they basically created a program called Amazon Fulfilled by Amazon. A lot of Amazon going on in here. <laughs> so basically what it is, you, you source a product, you send it to Amazon's warehouses, and you get a product listing on Amazon to start marketing your business. Now this comes, this allows you to tap into a bunch of different benefits here. So I'm going to go into some of the pros, and then I'm going to go into some of the cons, and then we'll go into the Shopify section and we'll wrap it up with my final thoughts here. So some of the pros of Amazon FBA is it's kind of like e-commerce on training wheels in a sense because you don't have to wear all the hats. Amazon does do quite a bit of heavy lifting for you. The most notable being the actual fulfillment side where you know you don't have to worry about how is how am I going to fulfill these orders. Now, there are warehouses like 3PL warehouses that can do this for you, but Amazon's the king of doing this, right? Like they, they've mastered two day shipping, even next day shipping in some markets. Like you can't beat them when it comes to this. They are masters of logistics. So that takes a big weight off of your shoulder. But another thing that they do is they take a lot of the marketing pressure off of your shoulders too. Now, my FBA entrepreneurs are like, what are you talking about? I have to do so much marketing, <laughs> hear me out. Uh, one of the cool things that Amazon does for you is you get to tap into their trust factor. So people trust, is like Amazon is one of the most trusted e-commerce stores in the world. When someone goes and buys something on Amazon, they're not looking up that vendor. They're not like clicking on the person who's actually selling the product. They're just trusting that Amazon is going to give them what they want. That's how much trust is deeply rooted in Amazon. Versus if you go to some, say like eBay, at least in the United States, you're looking at that guy's profile, like how what's his one star reviews, or what's his five star reviews, what are the customer feedback on this store? Am I going to get what I want? You know, <laughs> all this stuff. Amazon, that's not a big concern. And likewise, Amazon gets rid of this small e-commerce trust factor. So if you're just a random e-commerce store on Shopify that is a small store, people might not trust that brand very much. But if you have the same exact products, including the brand name as the vendor on Amazon, there's a higher chance of trust there. And thus, there's a higher chance of conversion. Plus, Amazon is always doing conversion tests to see how they can improve their conversions so they can all obviously make more money, right? So these are all really good benefits you get to tap into with Amazon. Now, of course, you still have to do some marketing and those that kind of marketing usually includes some kind of launch strategy like Facebook PPC or maybe Google AdWords or Amazon PPC, all that kind of good stuff. But once you get the ball rolling, you can start benefit from Google, uh, Amazon organic traffic which is amazing. You get to tap into a gigantic swath of traffic, of buyers, people who only come to the website to buy things. That's what they are there to do is to purchase, right? So this fact that you get this organic promotion from Amazon too is a huge benefit. And there are all big reasons why Amazon is fantastic or FBA is fantastic rather. And of course, this all leads to your ability to scale much easier. So let's go into some of the cons because I just built up Amazon Pretty big, like so big, Jeff Bezos' hair might be growing back, unlikely, but who knows what you can do in space. So let's talk about the cons of FBA. One of the biggest cons, the critical point of failure that Amazon has is you're on Amazon. So what I mean by that is if Amazon changes their program, if they update their terms of service or, or do anything to change the FBA program, you are locked in. There's nothing you can do. You are subservient to their algorithm. You're subservient to their policy changes. 
You're just powerless in that sense. So this is a real critical point of failure with FBA. And remember, a critical point of failure in a business means if that comes to pass, you basically don't have a business anymore. If the FBA program shuts down, you don't have an FBA business. No one does. Right? Amazon took it away. I, know, I think that's unlikely that they would do that. But you can see where I'm going here. Even my new changes to the program can have drastic knock-on effects when it comes to building your business. Another con here is the fact that Amazon is very picky on how you build your email list. They are, it's difficult to work with when it comes to actually building out a solid email newsletter, especially of people that have never bought your product yet that you wanna retarget. And that goes to another thing, it's hard to retarget, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the problem here is email marketing is like the, the most powerful marketing channel in the world, and you just are a lot less flexible on that. Plus you're less flexible on what you can say on the product listing page. You can't do, say, pop-ups or uh, you know sliding pop-ups or whatever. You can't customize the experience very much. It's very set in stone what you're allowed to do, even to the point of what you're allowed to put into your actual product packaging. I know for a while, a lot of people did inserts, and now Amazon looks at that with a little bit more suspicious eyes. Uh, so you have to really play by their rules, and their rules could change to where they do not benefit you at all anymore. So this is a big pro, a big con rather of Amazon. And unfortunately, when people get really, you know, they really build traction on Amazon, they're getting so much money from Amazon with their businesses that they never diversify away. And it's just like, well, I guess I'm married to Amazon now. <laughs> Come here, Bezos, right? So this is a trap that entrepreneurs can fall into very easily with FBA. Now let's move on to Shopify here real quick. So Shopify is very different than Amazon in that they aren't going to really help you sell your products. So what they're going to do is give you a self-hosted store that is infinitely customizable, at least in comparison to Amazon FBA. You can design the store any way you want. You can put email opt-ins wherever you want. You can drive traffic, build an email list, <laughs> pretty much any way you want. And the cool thing with Shopify is it's grown so big, there's now a very powerful ecosystem of apps and different tools that people have built. So you can really tap into a lot of different things that are very professionally made to solve almost any kind of e-commerce problem you have really, which is awesome. Shopify is by far the easiest of uh, the different kinds of self-hosted e-commerce stores you can build, I would say. I think followed by WooCommerce would probably be a close second, but I think the ecosystem for Shopify is probably better at this point. So Shopify is awesome in that sense. And let's talk about some of the uh, pros here. So I already kind of mentioned them, the customizability of everything, right? You can run a super powerful email uh, marketing campaign and paid ad campaign that are working together. So you can uh, drive all this cold traffic from say a Facebook ad, they come in, they subscribe, then you're driving ads to this segment that just subscribed. They get to the next part of your segmentation, or maybe you have a mid part of your funnel, and now you can run ads to that mid part because you can segment that list as well when you use a Shopify style setup. And now that's not inherently a Shopify thing, that's just an inherently you owning your store kind of thing. You could do that on WooCommerce or Magento too. So on Amazon, you couldn't do that. You can't really target that mid of funnel with anything. Uh, it's difficult to do that. And even with retargeting, you can't really do that either unless you are building your email list. Now, there are probably some workarounds to make this easy, and maybe Amazon has updated this term since last I looked at it, but from what I understand, it is it can be hard to retarget unless you're building the email list before you actually send the traffic to Amazon, which I do know can be a viable strategy. So another thing with uh, Shopify that is a big pro is the customizability of the actual checkout process. You can make the checkout process pretty much anything you want. You can turn, uh, you can have upsells, you can have cross sells, you can have discount packages that come, all of these things that can increase your AOV pretty dramatically that you don't really get to do with Amazon. Yes, there's the also bots on Amazon, but that doesn't really have the same effect a lot of the times as these cross selling, upselling, and downselling components that you can do. So you can create discount codes anytime you want on your product. And the beautiful, one of the big benefits of Shopify is the fees. The fees are gonna be way cheaper because you're probably using a 3PL warehouse 
versus storing most of your inventory with Amazon, which historically has had pretty high fees compared to other storage places. So much so that many FBA owners keep the majority of their products into 3PL warehouses and only send in inventory as needed to actual Amazon because of their storage fees. So this is something you don't have to worry about at all with Shopify. Of course, you still have to worry about fulfillment, which hopefully your 3PL can help you out with, but that leads us into the, the cons of, of this business, of, of Shopify. The big con is there's just so many different things you can do and you have to wear all the hats. There's nothing that Shopify is particularly doing that's making your job easier in the sense of a roadmap. Like they're not helping you necessarily with fulfillment. They're not helping you in terms of marketing because there's no organic search on Shopify's main website where someone could discover your product. Now, there are talks of them doing something like that, but as far as I know, that is still just a rumor. If they do start doing that, then that, that would be very interesting because that can open up a whole new organic channel that, uh, you know, that really does compete with Amazon considering the network of stores Shopify has that they can kind of do that with. Um, but right now, as far as I know, that doesn't exist. So you have to really go and find everyone yourself. You have to find every single customer yourself. Every single lead is based off of you. Likewise, customer service is all based off you. With Amazon, Amazon takes care of a large part of the customer service. Now, Obviously there are still tickets in that business model, but not nearly as much as it will be with Shopify because it's all, again, all up to you. Shopify is really just a portal that allow that you, that you can build to bring people through, but you control every single aspect of that. And by controlling every single aspect of that, in my opinion, that gives you far more opportunity, but that also gives you far more opportunity to fail. So it's kind of a, a hit or miss here, but, and that's like the, that's the main cons of Shopify. So let, let's add these up here between Amazon and Shopify. If, if I was a brand new entrepreneur, which one would I do? So I would ask myself how much money I have. So if I was going to go where I'm sourcing my own product, I would go with Amazon hands down because I know Amazon is going to actually feed me more benefits where I am doing less, where I wear less hats. Yes, I have to dance with uh, this this potential devil here who might change his policies on me, right? Uh, but I know I'm going to get a lot of benefits and I don't have to do everything myself. That would be important to me. Now, if I wasn't sourcing my own products, I'd probably start with Shopify with a drop shipping store. Drop shipping stores are absolutely terrible when it comes to selling them as an asset. Like we reject the vast majority of drop shipping stores that want to sell all their business with us. But dropshipping can be amazing for you because dropshipping has a lot of the similar initial pros that Amazon FBA has in the sense that you can just focus on the marketing. You don't have to focus on the fulfillment and actually getting the logistics of the product to you know, your 3PL. You don't have to worry about 3PL. It's all taken care of for you in dropshipping. So I would start with a dropshipping store in, in this scenario if I wasn't going to source my own products with a Shopify store and with the overall plan that I would use my dropshipping products as kind of my research and development of what kind of products I should source. And over time, as I prove out each dropshipping product, I would go and try to source that product or use the dropshipping as an upsell to have an accessory that I can sell to my audience. I think FBA businesses in general are probably going to be easier to scale. I think uh, they can be much more costly to start with uh, because in the example of Shopify, if you're going with a drop shipping store, it's you know very minimal on the cost you're going to do. Uh, I think Amazon FBA is the winner though when it comes to what is the easiest one to start. I think it will take more money, but I also think your chances of success are probably better if you do your research. Now I will say, I think it's much better, like it's harder to go from an Amazon FBA store to a Shopify store than it is to go from a Shopify store to an Amazon FBA store. And at the end of the day, what really matters for a business is distribution channels. And if you think about distribution, then your Shopify store is really just one distribution channel and your Amazon FBA business is a second distribution channel. And the reason why it's harder to go from FBA to Shopify is because they're radically different beasts. In a lot of ways, Shopify is a bit harder. You have to learn better skills a lot of times to make a Shopify store really work. It's a different kind of marketing, different kind of D2C marketing. Versus if you go from Shopify to FBA, it can be a lot easier because you often have a far bigger email list than if you were Focus just on FBA. And that means when you do launch on Amazon, you can actually be growing 
uh, or you can send your email list to Amazon to buy those products right away to help you in the algorithm. And the other thing that happens is Shopify stores that are successful are typically doing a lot of cool brand awareness things to build out their audience and nurture that audience through cool content, videos, blogs, podcasts, anything you can name under the sun. And so what this does is say I have an ad on Facebook to my Shopify store that I'm selling a dog bowl on or whatever. <laughs> it could be anything. I always use dog bowls. It's a dog bowl at this time. Uh, and that person is like, wow, that's a really cool dog bowl. Maybe even they click my ad, but they don't buy my dog bowl. Now they don't remember the name of the website that they went to, but they know, hey, I really need a new dog bowl. So they go to, guess where? Amazon. They go on Amazon, they type in dog bowl, and guess whose dog bowl they'll see? Yours, because your Shopify store was able to use its audience to rank in Amazon for number one position for that type of dog bowl that they're looking for. They recognize your dog bowl. You might not even be in the number one position. You might be in position three or four, but they see you on that first page like, oh, that's the one I saw, right? And so they ended up buying indirectly from your ad to Amazon. So think about distribution channels. Amazon FBA and Shopify, one is not better than the other. They both can be fantastic if you use it in a holistic approach. I do think an FBA entrepreneur has it easier when they start off. I think an FBA entrepreneur has it harder when they try to diversify off of Amazon. Shopify, it does take more skills in my opinion to really make work well, but once you have those skills, it's far easier to expand to different distribution channels because you already know how to do it in a lot of ways, much more than most FBA entrepreneurs would be my guess. So there you have it. If you're just starting out, FBA probably the best way to go unless you're doing a dropshipping store. But as you scale, having that e-commerce store is super, super powerful. And at the end of the day, both of them are important because at the end of the day, it's all about your distribution channels that is really gonna change may or make all the difference in your business, right? So if you like this video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below of what you thought of my very <laughs> monologue uh, about Shopify, Amazon, FBA uh, business models. And let me know which one you like. Do you like FBA? Do you like Shopify? A lot of people in our audience are probably going to say FBA because we have a huge FBA audience, but I would love to hear what your thoughts are on the two. And also, if you do want to sell your e-commerce store, whether it's an FBA or Shopify store, definitely check out the links down below. We'd be happy to help. See you in the next video. Talk to you soon.